I'm Steve. And this is our Van Grover. Grover's a 148 wheelbase, 2020 Transit, 250, all-wheel drive. This content is sponsored by Outdoorsy. Through Outdoorsy, you can rent your camper van out to make extra cash, and you can rent a van to try van life before you commit. Previously, we owned a 2015 Nissan NV2500. We loved it, it was great, it got us out, it got us into lots of adventures, but it was a little bit too small, a little too short, and we wanted some different features, and it was uh, two-wheel drive. So come on inside and see. So this part of my van is one of my favorites because it sort of brings the outside, the in transition. So we've got plugs to be able to plug things in. We can cook outside. Out here, we've got the light switch for the staircase when it's dark. I flip up to extend the counter, which wasn't meant to be here. Originally it was meant to be out here, but I didn't leave enough clearance for the door to close. So I put it over here and we're, we're glad we did, but eventually we're gonna find a solution for this because that is an awesome space to be able to set your drinks and whatnot. All right, so here we have the galley. We've got you know several drawers here. I went with the self-closing. They also sort of lock them in place so they don't come flying out when we're going down the road. Here's the sink. We've got the nice, nice spray nozzle so you can actually use it even outside. Soap dispenser, small little sink. This is great because of the rubber. It doesn't go anywhere. And it also extends our counter space going over the, over the sink. For water, we have uh, both hot and cold water. It runs off a 12 volt electric pump that we turn on and closet behind. Also, the hot water is a propane. It's also in the closet, feeds to the outside. The countertop is a solid, some kind of hardwood. Got it at Home Depot and just cut it down to fit. I think it's an 1800 watt induction single cooktop. All right, and the overhead cabinets, I built a little bit recessed above the, the sink here so they weren't in the way. Got an uh, under light, its own switch. The hinges I used will hold them open. And then I went with two magnets on the side to hold all the uh, dishes in so they don't come flying out when we're going down the road. This one was tricky because I had to fit the curve in the ceiling and also in the door as well. But in hindsight, I would have not gone that far, mainly because this corner here is common head bonker. The built-in spice rack, this was just a utilization of space when I was building out uh, for the bunk for the bed. There's, there's a cavity here, and I, so I just pictured a built-in uh, spice rack of some sort. So I built it in there, and then found these little spice racks that I could cut to fit. Um, then we also mounted one up here, and it's great to have all of our spices. And also in the door, I've got a, a window here. I really wanted some extra ventilation, so we can get cross breeze through that window and the window in the bedroom. All right, so and then we have three light switches here. Uh, one of them is for our overheads, so we've got one, two, three, four in the front part and then uh, in the back I've got another switch for the bedroom it's on a dimmer and I decided to go with two fans in my Nissan I had a fan in the back and an air conditioner in the front and I just felt like that was too much weight and air friction that I could only use and only needed a few times out of the year but I've got dual the dual fans here and I get cross breezes and we survived through 110 degree weather a couple days ago so it worked out well so for refrigerator, that one was a tough decision for me. I wasn't sure if I would go with um, a 12 or a 120. And I figured since I built out with uh, enough uh, power, I went with the 120. It allowed us to have a uh, small freezer on the top and then the refrigerator on the bottom. Worked out well, just had to get these latches uh, that stick on to uh, keep them from opening up. This is our shower. This was a must have for me. I needed this shower. It's awesome. My husband ended up doing tile, real tile work. He did a great job. It's got a light in the shower. It's got a handlebar to hold on to. It's got this really great faucet. It's heated by propane. We have a cassette toilet, which pops out, dump it. It's got a flip up toilet paper roll to cover the toilet paper when the water's on. So remember to use that because I always forget and we get wet toilet paper all the time. Um, he built this little rack for all my shampoos. It's got a great slider door, which I use often. Open it up. It's closed when I use it. When he uses it, he doesn't care. It's got a little bump out right here for elbow room. There's plenty of room in the shower for me. Well, just me. I don't think he can fit too, but 
Um, and it's got an opening up here for ventilation from the fan. I also hang our towels up here to dry. It works perfect. All right, so here we have the closet, and we wanted a place to, to hang coats and just store things like our broom. This is where we store our uh, window coverings for the, the cab. Um, we've got baskets for shoes. That's something we learned later after our shoes were always falling out so we put the baskets in there it holds them and inside it, this is pretty deep inside is the propane water heater and also ser serves a shelf i can put uh, things behind the water heater location right next to the shower is important because i didn't want that want it to take a while to warm up and waste a lot of water and um, also our the electronics and switches i have up here so that uh, all the little lights and leds are not keeping us awake at night got my uh, water pump switch, fresh water and gray water tank um, sensors, my tank heater so that uh, my gray water tank is below and I can keep that uh, from freezing in cold temperatures. Okay, so here we have our little kind of nightstand, extra countertop. We've got uh, charging ports and one 120 volt plugs. This is the, the dimmer switch for the bed. Then up here we have our AC and DC junction box. So I've got uh, my circuit breakers, my fuse panel. This is our bed setup. It also converts into a dinette. The bed is a queen width, uh, but short. For I'm five foot nine. Uh, my my son, who's slept in here before, is six foot one, and he can sleep in here. He's touching both ends, but he can sleep in here. It's made from a four and a half inch uh, memory foam mattress. I actually cut into sections so that it can be turned into a dinette set. In order to have the the length, I built these these bump outs where the window cutouts are. Uh, to, it gave us another probably eight or nine inches of length in the so we can sleep sideways and utilize the, the space. The bunk window that cranks out, that's um, a must. We have that, we've had that open almost every night to keep the breeze coming through. Little reading lights and um, extra storage up here for bread or towels or clothes or whatever you want to put in there. All right, so the cabinets we stretched all the way back. Our, uh, that's the foot of our bed. The head of our bed is clear over here, so we don't have to worry about hitting hitting our heads on that. We've got a fan that we can uh, we can either have it uh, pull air out or just pull it right down and blow right on us like a ceiling fan. It's it's quite comfy. So we raised the bed up this high to maximize the amount of storage underneath the bed. So for the garage and where I have my electrical batteries are are under there. So I just wanted to um, maximize that space and utilize this extra space that. Um, when you're sleeping, you don't really need. The mattress, uh, I cut up into these five chunks so that we could convert it into a dinette set. Then I upholstered them myself using these zippers so I can take them off to clean them. And so I've got this lagoon table that moves all around to have it however you want. Um, you can actually even fold this back out to be really big and um, turn it like this and you can have four people around here which we've done before. Underneath the floor here is where I have my three um, batteries and I um, connect them together with um, bars of copper um, screwed through and then uh, shrink wrap uh, so that we don't have arcing if something metal falls in there. So for battery I've got uh, three um, 100 kilowatt hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. We opted for this uh, Illuminus box, uh, mounts to three points, uh, mounts on the, the hinges so there's no drilling. You can get uh, my solo stove, um, power, uh, my hose, uh, I've got my leveling blocks, my dragonfly tarp. Alright, so here we have the garage. Um, it's where I wanted to have a lot of storage. Added some LED lights back here. So I made this pull out for, for my Yeti cooler so that I can get to it easily. It also adds extra storage down here for things like my butane stove for extra cooking outside. Spare refrigerator, which also I can turn it up to uh, be a freezer if I catch a lot of fish. I've got um, two 25 gallon water tanks. Of this tank over here is my, uh, it's a 2000 watt inverter, uh, my DC to DC charger, and uh, the solar controller. One of my favorite features is my shower, outdoor shower. So I can 
clean my fish back here, wash off my boots, whatever. Here we are up on top of the uh, luminous rack. I've got the luminous perforated top. Uh, I've got two uh, 100 watt, um, so 200 total of solar. I had to mount them on these, these brackets because I wanted to be able to still open up my vent here and they were too wide to fit down on the surface. I added these uh, bars here so I could put two kayaks up here. So the latest addition isn't really part of the van, but it's something we can tow behind, go fishing in. Um, it's a 16 foot aluma weld, uh, not super heavy boat, um, but we, we wanted something big enough we could go fishing in and be comfortable, but that Grover could pull it just fine. Thanks for checking out Grover with us. Follow us on our adventures at manlife underscore voyagers on Instagram. Hope to see you on the road soon. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you hadn't noticed, we do sell an ebook for how to convert a van. It has over 190 pages of detailed instructions and diagrams, also 25 video tutorials which are specifically for the ebook buyer. Creating a van for many people is obviously a really intimidating project. But I really believe, and I've seen it time and time and time again, that with the right information, anyone can turn out with a pretty decent van conversion. So check the link in the description, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, uh, and drop us a comment if you like this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.